Unfortunately, after last week's event... Acting? You call that acting? I'm a star man! <laughs> Mr. Sylvia will not be joining us on News Desk. So, good morning and welcome to News Day Tuesday. I'm Samuel Thomas and this is Mr. Foster. This is my show. Get out. Welcome to the actual Newsday Tuesday. I'm your host, Andrew Foster, and I'm joined on the news desk by Mr. Zivia. Bonjour, and a special thank you to a Year 5 pupil who suggested that I say hello in a different language for each different show. This week in international news, daring dogs, happy horses, cheeky cats, it can only mean one thing. It's the Bars Pet Care Comedy Photo Award, ladies and gentlemen. With a prize fund of £3,000, 81 countries and over 2,000 entrants, we're about to see some of the top candidates in their field for making happy, humorous photos. The first photo you see is Elf Wolfgang. Guess this dog is waiting for a paparazzi to take his photo. From Daniel Samillis, I guess this horse's neighbours will be thrilled that he's in the competition. Meowsers! Looks like Ian McConnell's photo here has a cat in a little bit of pain. Now here's a photo that will definitely make you bark with laughter. It's Carol Delaney's shot. Mehmet Aslan has taken this shot. Maybe she's barred with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. Kirsten O'Dalt's photo here. Looks like these dogs want to raise the woof at the party. Here's a lovely shot from Heather Ross, and maybe they'll soon be in the movies. Here we have Hertwi van der Putin. Check out this cool dog. Guess you could call him a popsicle? And Linda has taken a shot here. Looks like this rabbit is having a bit of a bad hair day. What's better than a spelling bee? Well, it's Dean Pollard's talking dog. Magalaraxa Russell de Oliveira has this perfect way for just hanging out. And finally, Karen Hogland have got this photo. I guess these dogs need to remember where they parked in the barking lot. Well, who do you think will win, Mr. Zivia? Uh, well, I don't really care, Mr. Foster. None of it was particularly punny. And now over to National News. Now, imagine you're wrapped up warm, home in bed, maybe a nice fluffy pillow, or duvet wrapped around you, feeling all snuggly and warm, and then suddenly you feel something touch your foot. And you think, <gasps> what is that? Do they flying off? What could it possibly be? And you can't believe your eyes. It's a ferret. Well, that's the case for Paul Newman from Imps and Cheshire this week. He awoke one morning this week to find the thirsty ferret running up and down his bed. He couldn't believe it. A thirsty ferret in his bed? Well, it turns out Lisa Marie Berkeley had lost Thomas the ferret only a couple of nights earlier. She had a momentary panic when she decided on social media she would post up photos of Thomas and ask anybody in the surrounding area if she'd seen him. Well, neighbours came back with various sightings, but it turned out Paul Newman was the lucky winner of the ferret turning up. Thomas the ferret was taken down the vets to check his microchip to make sure he was the right ferret in the right place at the right time. Patrick Newman had become quite fond of that young whippersnapper. And in this week's local news, a really wacky design engineer has set a really unusual Guinness World Record after reaching really fast speeds of over 40 miles per hour. Well, that sounds like a garbage story. Hey, no trash talking. I don't interrupt your segments. Now, if this had been in a car or on a bike, I'd understand why you'd be thinking that this record was a bit rubbish. However, Andy Jennings, 28, from Swindon, set this record in a garden wheelie bin. sink ourselves to toilet humour. You're about to witness Super Sivia take on Tornado Thomas in an ultimate battle. 
teacher versus teacher. Hello boys and girls, it's Mr Crabtree here with your school news. Uh, you may have noticed this week a large number of adults walking around the school. This is, they were not checking up on you, do not worry. They were looking around at how we teach maths in the school and how you learn. I was really pleased to see some amazing thinking, some great contributions to lessons and some brain box power going on. My favourite class this week, class of the week, was Miss Curley's class because when I was in there, they were on point, they were focused, they were kind to each other. It was just a great place to be. Miss Curley is, of course, my teacher of the week. Okay, and also, you may have noticed hot school dinners are back, back, back. Yes, that's right. If you want to have a delicious hot school meal in the comfort of your own classroom, you can now order a hot school meal at the start of the day. All right, that's everything from me. <laughs> Unfortunately, the IQA have had to cancel this year's World Cup competition. You might be wondering what IQA stands for. Well, it stands for the International Quidditch Association. Yes, that's right, Quidditch Association. It is a fast-paced, team-based game that originated from the Harry Potter books. Unlike the films, players don't fly, but they run around with brooms between their legs. The idea of the game is to throw the quaffle into the opposing team's hoops. The team with the most points wins. In the real version, there is a very small golden ball with wings called a snitch that a seeker has to try to catch. In the human non-wizarding version of the game, a person dressed in yellow has to run round and the seeker has to try to catch him. Once he's caught, the game finishes and the team with the most points wins. The game is increasing in popularity and is often played in univers universities across the globe. Well that was a fantastic story, it certainly wasn't a dumble bore. And that's it for this week's Newsday Tuesday. Join us next week, same time, same channel, for a fantastic round of news on this news desk for Newsday Tuesday. Sorted. Bonjour, 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 bonjour.